Thank you for the introduction. I'm uh, Luca Luceri. I'm uh, an incoming research assistant professor at the University of Southern California. I'm going to um, to describe you our paper called Leveraging Large Language Models on uh, to Detect Influence Campaigns on Social Media. Let me keep track of time. And um, I will start by saying, okay, what's an influence campaign? What's, uh, what are these influence operations? Well, these are orchestrated uh, influence efforts trying to that tries to manipulate public opinion, spreading propaganda, misinformation, or even amplifying content that is not necessarily uh, inaccurate. The, how does it work? Well, the idea is that the initiators of these campaigns create inauthentic personas that uh, generate content and spread it on social media platforms. And they do that often in a coordinated way, trying to uh, artificially amplifying uh, certain narratives uh, while escaping detection or um, manipulating platforms feed, hijacking existing hashtags, and trying to um, create an illusion of public consensus around certain narratives. The problem of these campaigns is that sometimes they get endorsement and trust for orga from organic legitimate users who then become unwitting collaborators of these campaigns, further resharing and reamplifying content shared by these inauthentic personas, which can even be picked up by mass media news outlets. Now, the objective of this talk is to look uh, at these inauthentic personas and the content that they share and try to identify these actors and the content that they share during these campaigns. And part one will cover our attempt of using LLMs in doing so. In part two, I will focus on coordination detection and uh, I will show how we can use coordination signals to incorporate the signals in the previous algorithm that I will uh, describe in part one. A quick disclaimer, this is not a work that tries to produce a misinformation detection tool. These accounts might even share accurate information, so it's not only misinformation. This is not about detection approach. We are not talking about bots only. In, human operators can be employed in these campaigns. And this is not a study where we try to understand users and organic users' uh, uh, influence and susceptibility to these influence attempts. We will have a talk about that if you're interested on Thursday in the Web for Good uh, session number one. Um, now we can focus on, on the objective after this very shameless advertisement. We can focus on, on the part one of this talk where we try to identify these personas. And we try to identify these personas looking at the content that they shared in these campaigns by using and by trying to use LLMs uh, to identify these influence efforts. How does it work? Well, the main objective and the main idea is to perform a user classification. So we want to classify users into two class, classes. Uh, one is related to the drivers of these campaigns, which, call, which, which we call uh, information operation driver, versus organic users that are our legitimate users that are involved in the same conversation and uh, uh, in the same time frame of these campaigns. And we propose four models. Uh, based on different information that we use as an input in these LLMs. Uh, we have interaction patterns. We, we have a model based on interaction patterns. We have another model based on network properties of the interaction network. We have another model based on shared metadata. And finally, we have a, a, a model based on the textual content shared by these users. So let's unpack this uh, from uh, uh, starting from the first model where we built an interaction network using retweets. So we have an uh, a retweet network. And we use the information uh, related to this retweet network, and in particular the connection within this retweet network, to fine tune an LLM. Uh, so basically, we uh, use the prompt and, team and the input in the box plot, in the, in the plot, sorry, in the, in the box, in the red box. Uh, at the bottom right, where basically we provide as an input to the LLM the connection within this retweet network. So we say, OK, user i is connected to user j, k, and l, and so on and so forth. And the prompt, what we ask the LLM to do is basically to determine if the user i is driving a campaign. And the answer can be yes or no. Uh, so we fine tune the LLM using uh, tweets and users that are only in the training set. And we test it with users in the test set. A similar framework is used in the second model, which is, based, which is based on network properties, where basically we use the very same retweet network to extract and compute uh, network centrality measures. So for each user, we compute 
different centrality measures, such as degree centrality, uh, eigenvector centrality, page rank, so on and so forth. And this will be our input to the LLM. So we will say to the LLM, look, this user i has centrality x, eigenvector centrality y, and so on and so forth. And then we fine tune the LLM and test with the test set. For the metadata, for the metadata based model, the idea is to uh, leverage the metadata shared in user tweets. Uh, and in particular, uh, we include hashtags, links, and mentions. So our input to the LLM is composed by these three, um, three kinds of information. Uh, so hashtag, as you can see here, uh, a, a set of hashtags, a set of uh, links, and a set of mentions that uh, the user uh, included in, the, in, their, in their tweets. And then, once again, the prompt is as before. We, we ask the LLM to determine if a user um, is driving a campaign on a social media or not. And we test again with users in the test set. Finally, the content share model is slightly different. And the idea is that we uh, first have a step that tries to identify and uh, classify, actually, tweets as either part of a campaign or to grassroots conversation. So tweets that are not part of any campaign and are just general conversation by uh, organic legitimate users. Then we use these outputs from the tweet classification to compute a user score. And the idea is that we provide and we, we compute a, a score for each user that goes from 0 to 1 by simply averaging the outputs of the tweet classification task. And this will, of course, take the form, uh, we'll take a value between 0 and 1, with 1 being uh, a user running and driving a campaign, and 0 being a orga an organic user. And then we use the training set to uh, fine tune this threshold in a way to maximize the AUC, uh, AUC in the classification task. And then we test, we use this threshold to test on the test set. How do we perform the tweet classification step? Well, we try different things, including prompt engineering, the um, kind of definition and, and terms that we used in the prompt. We tried zero and few shot learning approaches. We finally uh, employ a fine tuning because this technique allowed us to, to get better performance. And this is an example of prompts that we tested. So you can see that prompt one and three top left and top right in this slide basically includes different terms. And uh, we use, for instance, influence campaigns. So we ask if the uh, tweet is part of an influence campaign. Or we use the term infops, which, another, which is another uh, generic term that is used to indicate influence campaigns. And um, in the prompt number two and number four, uh, instead, we have a longer definition, where we, we, we include the definition of influence campaign and info ops, respectively, so that we tried to help uh, the LLMs to better understand what we are talking about. But in the end, the results was that, was that even a simpler prompt, like prompt number one, was good enough to give us good results and promising results. So we use this definition that you can see in, uh, in, in the prompt in the bottom of this slide, where we simply uh, say, OK, just de determine if this tweet is part of an influence campaign. Uh, we used uh, the. Um, LLM from Facebook, release, released by Facebook, called LAMA2, and uh, a version with 7 billion parameters. Uh, we also leverage guidance for uh, few-shot and uh, zero-shot learning approaches, even though we will not see results about that in, in this presentation, because the fine-tuning worked, uh, wor worked way better than, than the zero-shot and few-shot, as we might expect. And uh, for fine-tuning, we use LAMA Factory, which was uh, particularly helpful uh, to uh, fine-tune our model and provide uh, outputs that are in, uh, uh, in this binary uh, classification setting. So for uh, this task and for, for this study, we leverage two different data sets, both from Twitter. The first one is related to uh, Russian trolls activity during the 2016 US election and Russian trolls interference during that time. Uh, and, data fr and the second data set is from uh, uh, Twitter Information Operation Archive, which is a collection of uh, more than 100 influence campaigns carried out on Twitter that Twitter itself verified and defended in, uh, in, in courtroom and in, the, in, uh, in um, audits with the Senate. 
And uh, uh, within this data set, we also uh, include campaigns from different countries, uh, such as Egypt, Ecuador, and Venezuela. Uh, we split uh, uh, users in train and test set, trying to avoid information leakage. So users that are in train set will not in the test set, obviously. Uh, and we split train and test based on uh, uh, time. Uh, in particular, we compute the median time between users' tweets, and everything before that median time will go. We, we, is, com is included in the training set, and everything after in the test set. And then we check again for uh, information leakage because we don't want to have users that are in both the test set and training set. Okay, let's go to the results. The um, table at the bottom of this slide. Uh, aggregates the results over uh, across these campaigns uh, and uh, our four model plus the one on top uh, called uh, a model called linguistic cues that is our uh, baseline that is the um, the state of the art in the in the detection of uh, um, drivers of influence campaigns uh, using language models and in particular using linguistic features extracted from text so a few noteworthy uh, observation from these the metadata-based uh, model achieves the best AUC, while the content-based model is the one performing uh, better in terms of F1 score, close to 93%, and a very high precision, close to 95%. I want to stress on this because precision in this context is particularly important, because we want to minimize the number of false positives. We want to minimize the number of organic users that are misclassified and classified as drivers of these campaigns. And this is particularly important because in a setting like this, we don't want to, uh, we don't want to misclassify innocent people. We want to um, classify, we, we don't want to misclassify them because this might lead to penalties like suspension or banning from uh, social media platforms, which might lead even to an overhead from, from, these from social media providers. So, uh, precision is, is very important in, in the setting of the detection of information operation. Um, other um, models, like the ones based on centrality and interaction, uh, do not work as expected, and in particular, show these results show limited capabilities in the detection of these campaigns. The linguistic cues works quite well. It has the highest recall. This is our baseline, the, the one on top. Uh, but when disentangling these uh, results across our four campaigns, we notice a few things. For, so first of all, the content-based model achieves the best performance and outperforms the linguistic cues approach uh, or achieves uh, comparable result with this state of the art. But what uh, we notice, and most importantly, is that the linguistic cues uh, works worked perfectly, or almost perfectly, in the context of the Russian 2016 election, so a very uh, a less recent, a least recent uh, influence campaigns, but it experienced uh, diminishing efficacy with new and most recent campaigns, like the one from 2019 onwards, from Egypt, Ecuador, and Venezuela. Um, showing, therefore, the uh, potential of LLMs to adapt better to unseen and new campaigns. I think this is what I just said. OK, uh, then we said, OK, why don't we combine together all these features? Why don't we create a unique model that incorporates uh, information about content, metadata, centrality, and, uh, and interaction? Oh. And interaction. So we tried building this model, combining all these four features and four information together. But it didn't work as expected. As you can see, the results in the old model, that means all the features together, do not, uh, does not, uh, this performance does not um, mirror what we found before, very promising performance with AUC F1 close to 90%. Uh, and this, of course, posed some questions about the use of LLMs and uh, the use of different inputs that might um, interfere with each other when combined in a unified LLM. And an ablation study also confirmed these. If you can see the, if, um, if you notice the other four uh, bars uh, related to an ablation study. So basically we build a model uh, using all the, the, the features but one. For instance, all but interaction, all but centrality, all but metadata, all but content. They do not perform that well. So again, this will require uh, more work and more research towards combining better and in, in a way that 
combine better this, this different information in a way that LLMs can provide uh, results aligned to what we have seen before when a single feature was used like this. Um, so overall, uh, we proposed, and this is going to be the conclusion of part one, and I will stop here for, for some questions before moving to part two. Uh, we showed how, the, uh, how LLMs can be potentially used to detect influence campaigns and uh, their capabilities in adapting to unseen and new campaigns. This uh, combination of multiple uh, features, however, does not work as expected and prompt questions to better uh, combine together the different uh, features uh, that might allow us to achieve even better performances. Okay, I'll stop here for, for uh, questions and then I'll move to part one. Um, no problem. Uh, actually, it's, it's, it's uh, like a follow-up study that we are working on trying to improve this classification performance, especially when it comes to uh, interaction and centrality. We have seen that these models do not achieve great performance or promising performance or even comparable performance to the state of the art. So what we can do, what can we do to also have better signals and more um, and more um, important signals that, that related to coordination. And that's why this is part two. We look at coordination. What does it mean? As I said before, coordination means that these accounts distribute their activity to create an evolution of public consensus, to artificially amplify content, and, um, and to uh, evade detection. So this is part of a paper that I'm going to present, so I will be even shorter than I want to uh, waste everybody's time. I'm going to present this paper on Wednesday during the social number one um, so social number one uh, session. The main idea here and why is it important is that we can create other kinds of network that we can use uh, with LLMs. So instead of having interaction network, we can have similarity networks, which is one of the uh, main techniques when it comes to detecting coordination. What, what's the idea there is that we want to pinpoint unaccepted or uh, uh, unexpected or exceptional similarities in user behaviors looking uh, to looking at a variety of sharing behaviors sharing activities like resharing the same content sharing the same URL uh, sharing the same hashtags having similar original content or uh, having behaviors similar to automation and uh, the idea is that, we can use this network, we can build, we can compute these similarities and build similarity networks where each uh, edge in this similarity network represents, represents uh, the similarity between two nodes. So the higher the similarity, the higher the, the weight in the, in, in the edge between these two nodes. And so we can build networks that basically look like this one where uh, basically we represent similarities and similarities are represented by the edge weight. And uh, these kind of networks can be used to identify users that coordinate. Now in this work, we uh, move a step forward with respect to the state of the art and we identify that, we, we discover that network centralities can be uh, the best property. Uh, as of today, we, we demonstrated that it is better than other properties in this network to identify these users. So we can now use these network properties and uh, uh, feed the LLMs as done before by using this kind of network similarity. So I will skip all these things uh, for the sake of time, but the main idea is that going back to our LLM, instead of saying, okay, user I is connected to J, K, and L, in the retweet network, we can say, okay, user I is similar to J, K, and L, and we can use a variety of similarity networks. Uh, and in particular, in this work that I um, have no time to, to, to describe today, we fuse multiple signals, like sharing, resharing the same content, sharing the same URL, hashtags, and similar tags. So we can create a similarity network, a fused similarity network that takes into account all of these behavioral traces and use the similarity network as an input for an LLM. And this is what we are doing as a follow-up paper, as a follow-up work of what I just presented today. Uh, here is the link to the paper uh, with a QR code. And uh, that's it. I'd like to, to thank my team that worked across these two uh, papers and I'll be happy to take questions 
less than five minutes. <laughs>